and welcome to the Environmental Science uh, Open Day presentation for Summer 2020. Before I start the main talk, a few introductions. This is the Environmental Science team, so between us we look after all of the Environmental Science teaching and the Environmental Science students. My name is Pete, I'm Head of Environmental Science and Admissions Tutor as well, so if you have any queries just get in touch with me and I'll help however I can. Now the main purpose of the talk is to look at environmental science degrees, what Southampton also has to offer, what kind of things our students do and what they go on to after graduation. Now to begin with, it's worth taking a step back and thinking about where we are and why we have focus on the environment. Now the phrase the perfect storm comes from an analysis by a senior government advisor, Sir John Bennington, uh, back in 2009 predicted that the way that we're using uh, resources globally is going to reach a critical point in 10 years from now. So our use of water, energy, our need for food, rising population and climate change will all conspire to make things very, very difficult in just 10 years from now. So to try and avert that, uh, that likely future, we need people who understand the environment and how we work with it, how it works for us. So knowledge and understanding are the basis for positive change, but environment is big and complicated. So learning about everything that you need to know within the scope of a degree is actually pretty difficult, if not impossible. So the way that universities approach this is to split learning into two main areas. <clears throat> so one is the core modules, the essentials, the must-haves for a degree course. Uh, we start with the graduate and work backwards, so try and uh, make sure that everyone who graduates has all of the things that are expected from an environmental science graduate. And in tandem with that, we have specialist uh, learning within a defined area. So this is complementary uh, knowledge and understanding that comes from specialist modules and from projects and placements and such like as well. Now we have three degrees at Southampton, uh, so there are three environmental science degrees, uh, two and environmental science that focus on the, the science expert aspects exclusively and then we have an environmental science and business uh, course that focuses more on the, uh, the business applications. Now those offer opportunities to specialise in different areas. <clears throat> so the environmental science course has four pathways. So one is biodiversity, biodiversity and conservation which focuses on living organisms and ecosystems, how we deal with those, what they do for us and how we work with them. Environmental change can encompass uh, global through to local change, geological timescales through to human timescales, or a combination of those. Sustainable environmental management covers the applications of scientific theory to effect uh, sustainable systems. Aquatic environments and resources can focus on freshwaters, marine systems, <clears throat> or a combination of them, and draws particularly upon the expertise in our oceanography uh, centre at Southampton. And then we, our other degree, Environmental Science and Management, focuses on the uh, applications of management and environmental science in settings such as particularly commercial and business areas. Now within the degree, the first year begins mainly with focus on the core subjects. <clears throat> so that means that so people aren't committed too much to specialisation and get a, a good understanding of those core subjects by the end of the first year. <clears throat> so at the end of the first year, our students can firm up on their pathway or course. At this stage, <clears throat> they've taken a set of modules that are, are common, shared across many of our degree courses, and they've got a good insight to where they might specialise in due course. The second year, there's more of a balance between the, uh, the specialist and the core modules, so it's about 50-50. And then in preparation for the third year, we start our third year research projects off towards the end of the, uh, the second year. Then in the third year, there's much more on the, uh, the specialist areas and less on the core subjects. And a big kick on the um, uh, specialist sk uh, skills is through the research dissertation, which again is in a specialist area. Now, after year three, all of our students can graduate with a, a bachelor's uh, honours degree. Um, the students on the environmental science course can proceed to a fourth year and complete a master's level uh, degree where the fourth year is, is spent exclusively working in specialist areas. So that's not for the environmental science with, uh, with, uh, with management, only for the environmental science courses. Now, to give you an idea of how this works in terms of teaching, 
first year we have an environmental concepts and communication module that I run. So the kind of uh, 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 sessions that you'd expect here are all there, lectures, seminars, seminars and tutorials. Quite a lot of this is on independent learning, uh, preparation for the, uh, the assessed report and so forth. We use this as a module to make sure that all of our students are properly inducted into processes and expectations in university. Uh, so they know what the kind of things that we're expecting. And there's also some practice work in there. So there's a good opportunity to make mistakes and learn through them. Alongside that, we have environmental field techniques and analysis. So this is a practical based module where, again, you have support sessions of various types, tutorials, lectures, workshops. <clears throat> The focus of this is on field techniques, covering a wide range of different uh, uh, settings and, uh, and issues. And towards the end of this, we roll everything together and have a group research project that deals with um, the processes of carrying out research, risk assessment, ethics and such like, and also the planning, execution and reporting. The end of the first year, as I said, then this is where the, uh, the choice of uh, specialisation kicks in. Uh, so this is really about aligning your interests with your choices. So in uh, Giovanna's case, she was always uh, absolutely 100% keen and committed to water, and she still is, so it's a relatively easy decision. If you're not quite sure where you want to specialise yet, don't worry. During the first year, you've got plenty of time to think through that and decide where you want to focus your efforts. Now, in the second year, things change, so we have less in the way of core modules and more in the way of choice. <coughs> Our sustainability module, again, has lots of different uh, uh, teaching styles and approaches, different sessions, uh, role plays included here. There's a video that's produced as part of the assessment. And of course, this orientates very much around these uh, sustainable development goals that have been published by the United Nations. This also includes a residential field course. So by student request, this is a no-fly um, field course that uh, uses public transport in, uh, in France. Our environmental impact assessment module falls alongside that. So again, we have a range of different teaching sessions, site visits, external speakers. This covers the whole range of environmental impact assessment from the first principles through to um, actually carrying out EIAs. And the, uh, the assessment for this is a scoping report, which is actually standard procedure within EIAs. So it matches industry standards and actually it gets a lot of credit with employees as well. Now, when it comes to choosing more modules, you've got a, um, a possibility to focus on content, so the subject areas you're interested in, and you can also bring into play how you learn. So the quote here from Annabelle expresses the view that different modules are taught in different ways and assessed in different ways, so you can decide how to challenge yourself by selecting modules uh, on the basis of content and the way that they're taught. Now, as we get to year three, uh, there's less in the way of core modules and more in the way of options. Uh, environmental law and management is core. Again, a mixture of different types of teaching sessions and styles, external speakers, site visits and such like. There's an assessed presentation within this. And again, there's a strong applications focus on what the law means for the environment, as well as how the, uh, the law is structured. The individual research project is a major part of the third year as well. So this is a, a big part of the, uh, the whole of the degree, so independent uh, individual work. Our role as supervisors is to guide and support but not do the work, so many of the ideas come from the students, uh, students themselves. And this plays a big part in uh, getting uh, specialist skill, uh, skills, it can give you network contacts, and it really is rightly uh, thought of as the flagship of uh, a student's performance and achievements during a degree. If you go on to the, year, uh, the fourth year through the MMSI, we have two uh, core modules. Work-based learning is all about translating theory into practice in the workplace. Uh, this is flexible, so part-time or full-time modes. And the portfolio for this includes uh, some work on uh, research work that's undertaken, a project in the placement, and also on the way that work is undertaken, so skills appraisal. And we find that's really helpful for people getting shortlisted and being successful in job applications. It's also compulsory to carry out an advanced research project. <clears throat> this is a quadruple module, so half of the, uh, the fourth year is spent doing this work. Now this, again, has uh, common facets 
uh, with the, the third year project, but because it's bigger and at a higher level, it gives you a chance to go further and deeper and understand more and better about a specialist area. And in a lot of cases, um, people have published their work based on the, uh, the work that they produced in the fourth year. It's also worthwhile thinking about what you do outside formal learning, so co-curricular learning as we call it, internships, vacation placements, voluntary work. Uh, there's a whole load of uh, events and initiatives that we have at Southampton uh, that are worth getting engaged with. Then you have global uh, projects such as Anactus and Merit360, which are worth doing a little bit of searching uh, about and having a look at. Now, where this might end up at the end of a degree is actually quite positive. So the prospects of, uh, of employment are good. The latest data we have are just here. So basically, uh, over 80% are in gainful employment in uh, appropriate jobs. Uh, starting salaries for 2017 graduates were about 21,000. Um, the new data since then haven't yet, yet been uh, published, but pretty good in the whole. Um, we don't have a typical destination for, uh, for graduates. Um, we usually find that there's about four out of five or more of uh, graduates actually work in the environment sector, which is really high and nice to see. Few examples there, very, very wide range of different roles and very wide range of employers, public, private sector, regulators, a very wide range. The message that we get as well is that uh, within a few years of graduating, then career progression is good. Uh, so people grow in terms of responsibility and they, uh, their salaries increase. Uh, longer term, the examples that we've got here, you'll see that we've got senior people, directors, leaders. Uh, we have a director of science at the Royal Botanic Gardens, for example, is one of our graduates. Uh, one of the WWF's global lead scientists is also a BSc, an MSI graduate from Southampton. Few words to wrap up with. There are some different things that are important to think about. Uh, Matt Norman's uh, comments here are very instructive. The facilities, the surroundings, what goes on around you should be inspiring, interesting. It should be something that motivates you and helps you achieve your best work uh, in a good way. So that whole environment of, of being and learning in a university that's vibrant and has lots of things going on is a real positive. The other big positive is the people that you're studying with. So as Jack says here, uh, the other people around you are really important. You talk with them, they're your social group, they're your peers. They can help you decide on your ideas, where you want to take things and help in long-term directions. A few tips from our students for people who are thinking about where to go and what to study. First thing they say is, don't worry about it too much. Which degree you choose isn't contractually binding for the rest of your life. It's about the subject and it's about the personal development and the journey that you make. When it comes to the, the choice of subjects, they see environmental science as a good place to be, vibrant and dynamic with lots of opportunities. And the important thing is that they highlight the interest to you. It's really hard to engage in a degree in a subject you're not interested in. And that leads into my last tip. <clears throat> when it comes to your personal statements, if you're finding it really hard to write down why you're interested in environmental science, you're probably not applying for the right degree. If there's lots and lots of things that you want to get into that space on your UCAS form, you're probably in the right place. So do make sure that you use that as a health check for your degree choice. And to finish up with, let's go back to this. Now, typically in one hour at the moment, we have about 9,000 more people uh, on the planet. So 9,000 more uh, mouths to feed, people buying things and wanting accommodation and clothes and everything else. About 900 tons of plastic is discharged into the oceans in about an hour. And there's about 1 million tons of carbon dioxide every 15 minutes that are discharged into the atmosphere by uh, fossil fuel uh, combustion. So hopefully during the time that you will spend during the open day today, looking at things, listening th to things and talking with people, we'll have a good chance to inspire and encourage a future generation of environmental scientists uh, to deal with these problems and possibly uh, map out a better future for us. So I hope this uh, presentation has been useful to you. I wish you all the best and I hope that the rest of the open day is positive and useful to you. And again, please get in touch if there is anything else that we can help with in the future. 
Thank you very much for your attention.